Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be discussing how you can produce a song with samples. We'll be covering the step-by-step -step process from how to source your sample in the best way possible, all the way to legally distributing your song. Additionally, we'll be making a sample-based song that you can listen to by the end of this video, so stick around for the full video. But first, if this is a topic that you find interesting, I'd highly recommend looking into the blog post that's associated with this video. You can find the link for that in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you gotta do is set up the short account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. Step one, source your primary sample from a high res source. Now, more times than not, sourcing a sample is done incorrectly, or at least in a way that isn't ideal. When sampling, engineers often use services like YouTube to MP3, which converts the video file into a lossy audio file, which has aliasing and clipping distortion. With that said, pulling your sample directly from YouTube or a similar site isn't ideal, sonically speaking. If you want the highest resolution possible, you need to source your sample from a high resolution file or medium. That's why we recommend either recording your sample into your session directly from a vinyl record, a CD, or other high resolution medium, or obtaining a PCM file, which is a WAV or AIFF file, or a lossless file, which is like a, a FLAC file. Again, this is just one method for sourcing your sample. Personally, I thoroughly enjoy using a vinyl record due to the additional noise and texture that it provides. For example, I'll be recording in my sample from a vinyl record that's been set to 45 RPM when the disc should be played at 33 and a third RPM. Now doing this will make the sample higher in pitch. We'll take a listen to this sample later on in the video. Step two, isolate the sample or samples that you want to use. Now that you have a good portion of your signal recorded into your session, trim and delete any aspects of the signal that you won't be using as the sample. Now it's also a good idea to copy the full recorded signal and move it to later on in your session. This way you can reference the source of your sample later on and pull from it as needed. Now when isolating the sample you want to use, it helps to zoom in as close as possible to determine what will and won't be a part of your track. Now you'll need to create as accurate a cut as possible. This way you'll be able to determine the correct tempo later on. Step three, set the correct tempo for your session and use time correction if needed. Now before you begin to loop the sample or add layers, you'll need to determine its tempo. The quickest way to do this is to tap the tempo using a tempo detecting tool. You can also accomplish this visually by altering your session's tempo and observing when the transients of your sample align with the grid of your session or if you source your sample from Tidal or another streaming service, or maybe a CD, you can easily look up the track's BPM and go from there. But if you source your sample from a vinyl record, like in our example here, odds are you'll need to perform some type of time correction. The reason being, vinyl records and turntables can introduce small variations in the speed of the rotation and in turn, the speed of the song itself. So step one, to alter the timing of your sample, enable flex in your session and on your session's track. Step two, delete any unwanted corrections and alter the flex setting to best suit your sample. Step three, drag any flex time markers to the correct grid setting. And step four, review your time correction and compare it to your metronome to ensure that the sample is in time with the set BPM of your session. Once this is performed correctly, you can loop your sample if needed. Step four, layer in your percussion. If you want to layer in percussion, you can either record acoustic instruments, or more commonly, you can use a MIDI recorder. And what's incredibly convenient about using MIDI data is that it offers the option to not only quickly and easily change the sample you're using for your percussion, but it also allows for quantization. Simply put, you can quickly perform MIDI recording using your keyboard and a software instrument. Once that recording has been completed, you can highlight your percussion notes and use quantization to realign those notes with your recording grid. Step five, layer in all additional instrumentation and vocals. Now keep in mind the sample that you used will directly impact the instrumentation you add. From the key and octave, the intensity of the performance, the sample you recorded will affect all aspects of your composition. It also helps to keep the frequency response of your song in mind. If the sample you use primarily occupies the mid-range, then it may be best to continue your composition by adding high frequency and low frequency instruments into your recording. Now this way the frequency response stays balanced. Now before we mix and master the song, 
Let's listen to how this composition sounds. I'll slowly layer in each instrument's layer I've created starting with just the sample. This way you can hear each step we've accomplished so far. Step six, mix and master your project. Now you may be curious what's different about mixing and mastering a song with a sample in it as opposed to mixing a traditionally recorded song. In short, you won't need to process your mix as much as you typically would. Because your sample has already been equalized, compressed, and otherwise processed, you most likely won't need to add additional processing to it. That said, any additional processing may cause your sample to sound over-processed. Additionally, if you're using any other samples in your mix, maybe like the drum sampling and MIDI recording that we were discussing before, then this same thought process may apply to these samples as well. Granted, even if your sample came from a pre-release recording, it may still need some further technical and creative processing to make it sound the way you want it to. And the same goes for mastering. You most likely won't need to use too much compression during the mastering process if the majority of your song has already been mastered. With that said, any changes made during mixing and mastering will truly depend on the sample you used and its prevalence in your mix. Step 7. If you plan on releasing the song, handle all legal aspects of clearing the sample. Now for this you'll need two licenses, both of which need to be negotiated and agreed to upon by all parties involved. So you'll need a license for the master recording and a license for the composition. Because neither of these are compulsory, your request to sample the song may get flat out rejected. Now if you're looking to release a song that includes a sample, the best course of action is to reach out to the label that owns the master. From there, you can determine if they'll grant you access to the master recording. Once you hear back from them, you can determine if this will be within your price range. Considering there is no regulated or set amount for this type of licensing, the figure can really be whatever the label thinks the value of the master recording is. Now, once you've acquired an agreement from the label, you'll need to reach out to the publisher. Follow the same process you did when contacting the label and negotiate for the right to use their composition in one of your songs. Now, if this all seems like too much, which is completely understandable, then you can recreate the sample for yourself. For example, if you want to sample a particular section of a song, but you can't get the licensing for it, you can create a cover of the song and use this cover as the sample. In other words, you could re-record the song for yourself and then cut it up however you wanted to use it. Because this is a recreation of the song and not the master recording, all you need is a mechanical license. A mechanical license is really easy to get since it's compulsory, meaning you can't be denied it, and it can cost as low as $20. So this is how you produce a song with samples and how you handle some of the legal aspects of releasing that sampled song, but what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also again, definitely check out the blog post where you can find a lot more information on this topic and others like it. There's a link in the description box below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you gotta do is set up this account, upload the song, and we'll do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release new videos every week and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.